finally happening? Oh, this is it! Persona 5 is coming to Switch! I called it! I knew it! S obviously stood for Switch! What else could it possibly stand for? Persona 5? Scramble? Like scrambled eggs? Scrambled? Really? Atlas? Re like you're gonna let that go on for as long as you did? You know if you codename this thing P5S that everyone was gonna assume that it was Switch and you let that go on for months. You made me look stupid. You made me- you, you put egg on my face, you scraped that egg off, you scrambled it up, and you served it back to me in the form of Persona 5 Scramble. I gotta say, Atlas, well played. Use that hype to your advantage, but at the same time, S stands for screw you. Although to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> Persona 5 Scramble looks pretty fun. It's a Warriors game, like Dynasty Warriors and Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors and Warriors Warriors, and now we have Persona Warriors, which it looks fun, and I'm glad it's gonna be on Switch. Like, I have to give props to Atlas for putting a title on the Switch. That's something that doesn't happen nearly enough. It's just not exactly the title I wanted. However, I've already bought and played Persona 5 once. Why am I so randy to get it again on Switch? A Persona 5 Scramble, that's what- that's what- <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Look, I'm not actually complaining. I, uh, to reiterate, I think it looks fun. I like the Warriors series. I've played pretty much all of them so far, apart from Dragon Quest Warriors, Heroes, or whatever they called it. I don't know, because they won't actually port it to English and release it in America, or just in places that speak English. I happen to be in America. It's only in Japanese, and I don't want to import it and be completely lost to not knowing what I'm doing, because I cannot speak Japanese. That might surprise you, but I'm not smart. <laughs> In the meantime, though, I do have another Switch game I can play. Uh, it's a very expensive Switch game. Apparently, it costs over $6,000. I was lucky. I got it from GameStop for $60. I don't know. I guess I got a good deal. <laughs> According to one Reddit user, it would cost $6,440 to unlock everything there is to unlock in this game. Or it would take approximately 4,000 hours to grind it out and unlock all of it without having to spend any money. Now, before that was debunked by Ed Boon himself, I didn't even really have an issue with that, because I'd already been playing the game for days up until I read that on Reddit, and I didn't have any reason to spend a dollar on it. I didn't have any reason to take out my credit card or remember my PayPal login, because I always forget it, and try and spend money on this thing. No opportunity arose. There was just, there was just no reason for me to do it. So I was fine with it, before it was debunked. But then it turns out that while that math is technically correct, if you were to buy every skin at the price skins are, that's how much it would cost, you can actually buy every skin. A lot of it, you could only unlock by playing the game. So that brings the price down to, I don't know, $3,000? <laughs> I mean, that's what microtransactions are. They're a way of these companies making stupid amounts of money. Sometimes it's implemented well. I will say that I spent a little too much on Pokemon Go last year, but that's beside the point. I gotta hatch my eggs. What can I say? I love a good scramble. You know, it does add up quick, especially when every skin is like five bucks. Yeah, I mean... If you add it all up, it's gonna cost a lot of money, but who's out there buying all of it? The microtransactions in this game, in my opinion, are fine. I wish they weren't there, but they're fine. <laughs> Whatever it is you buy, I do believe it's worth every penny. Don't go crazy. <laughs> I mean, don't spend $3,000 on the game, but it's a really fun game, and I am very surprised by its performance on the Switch. I heard a lot of negative things leading up to the release of this game, that it ran poorly, it looked terribly, and I, and I wasn't surprised at that because it's very ambitious. But I am very happy with it. The gameplay is at a steady and smooth 60 frames, which is exactly where it needs to be in a fighter game of this style where every frame counts. It does look rough around the edges while you're in the fights, that's for sure. There's some artifacting going on, it's not crisp, it's not clean, the backgrounds are a little muddy, the characters look a little like they're about to get beamed up by Scotty, like they're missing pixels or something. But it's not game breaking and it's not so upsetting to look at that it scrambles up my stomach and makes me feel ill or anything. You get used to it and because it plays so smoothly, it just becomes a fun fighter experience. And you know what impressed me the absolute most than anything else is the story. 
Can I- I'll be honest, I haven't really played many Mortal Kombat's. I played the second Mortal Kombat and now I'm playing this one. Actually, it kind of worked out well for me because the center point of the story in this one is like the past and the current, the story's like merging together, and it's a lot of the old characters meeting themselves in the future, so for me it's kind of like... That's all I know, and it, it, it's cool. The story is awesome! I, I didn't expect such an ambitious... It's literally a Mortal Kombat movie with these insane cutscenes and animations and fight sequences. It's one really long Mortal Kombat fighting movie that's just full of action and every now and then you take over the controls of the battle and you get to play out that battle and then beat that opponent and then it kind of just dives straight back into the story again. It's actually really cool. And even as someone that doesn't really know the characters all that well, even not really knowing the characters, I'm still laughing along with them and having a great time. A lot of the interactions between the characters meeting themselves from past to present or just talking to each other. Like when Luke and the other guy that I don't remember his name are going and breaking into this place and there's booby traps everywhere and they're kind of having this little rivalry about who is better at handling the situations than the other one, who's the better fighter, who's smarter, who's stupider. The voice acting is really great, the facial animations and all the animations are fantastic so it all comes together again like a really well put together movie. You can tell that love and passion and effort went into this story and scripting it and storyboarding it all out frame for frame and building this epic saga that I'm just so happy to be a part of. Other than that, I've dived into online and I don't know if you guys playing on the Switch online just suck <laughs> or if it's matching me with people around my level, which is probably actually doing that, but I am winning more than I thought I would be considering I'm not good at the game. I'm really not. I haven't even touched the tournaments or the towers or the arcade mode or any of that. I've just been playing through the story. I've almost finished it, playing a bunch online and then just solo fights one-on-one -on -one around that. There's still so much I have to explore in this game. Apparently when you play through the arcade mode, every character has a different ending. Like, there is so much content, so many characters, so much to do. I have so much left to explore, which is why I feel like for 60 bucks even, it was worth every penny. And then if you want to go out and spend some extra dollars on it here and there, maybe buy some skins, maybe cheat and buy a character sooner than you can unlock it, or buy all the characters. I think it's like 100 bucks to get everything on the eShop, then I think that would be worth every penny too if it's something that you would enjoy. Very surprised by this port. I didn't think it was going to run very well, play very well, look very good, and it does play well and it does run well. It looks okay. <laughs> uh, last couple things I wanted to say since, you know, I follow along with a lot of the Switch news and stuff. And I feel like I should talk about it from time to time whenever I feel like it. Um, well, Mario Maker 2 just got a release date. I'm sure you know about that. It's in June. I'm really hype. I'm really excited. If you've been watching my recent videos on the channel of me playing through Smash levels, I've been having so much fun with that, and I can see that easily being transferable to Mario Maker because it's essentially the same thing. Mario Maker review stage something that I'll rip off from PewDiePie and I'm really looking forward to making those you know scramble up my content here and there so if that's something you guys might like please let me know down below and keep watching and sharing those videos when I make them. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, you know how we're getting new Switch models apparently according to Wall Street Journal, who I don't know if we can trust at this point. A mini, which got leaked recently, images got leaked that I believe are fake. Most people believe they're 3D printed fakes. Someone's scrambling around their 3D printer to try and get fake internet points. But Nintendo has officially said that you will not see any of that at E3. None of, until Nintendo has confirmed any of it, it's all just rumors, but it's really fun to speculate and talk about. These are the things that give me a reason to live each day, to wake up in the morning and check Reddit while I'm eating my bacon and scrambled eggs. I'm so mad at Atlas right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care anymore. Let's just have fun with the channel, guys. I, it, let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just hit subscribe. Have flip on it. Click or tap on this video. 